Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Teresa, this is Lost My Thread, and it is the final bit of Me Made May, so I'm gonna be sharing with you what I have been sewing and wearing in the last few days, but more importantly, what I have learned throughout this whole month. So I have been keeping you all up to date with what I've been doing up until the 28th of May. There's not going to be quite so much, just because it's been a final few days since I last made a video about this, but I still wanted to keep you all up to date. There's one more garment that I managed to finish that I had started last week, but it's now done. And of course I did want to share updates on what I've been wearing as well, like I have all along. But I think for me, the most valuable thing that I get out of Me Made May is the reflection at the end of it. So looking back at what I wore, what I enjoyed wearing, what was missing, but there were actually a lot more lessons this time around than I have previously. And that really came down to the pledge that I made at the beginning of the month. So I'll be sharing with you what I've learned throughout this month and I hope that you find it interesting and inspiring too. So the garment that I have made today came from a dress that I made back in February of 2021. It is the Groove Dress by Made It Patterns. This was made in a really lovely fleece back cotton sweatshirting fabric that I got from Somi Sunshine. The fabric has these lovely little glittery specks throughout it that are just on the front side, so not on the inside. And the inside is actually a really thick, soft, fleecy lining. It's thicker, I think, than I was expecting. You get different levels of fleece back, but this is really super snuggly and warm. And the dress that I made was really, really fun, but I think the biggest issue was one of these common things where it was just not the right fabric for it. This fabric does not actually have very much stretch. It can give a bit, but it's not like a stretchy sweatshirting, and they do vary. This is the second time I've actually made something or tried to make something of like a sweatshirt with a sweatshirt fabric that didn't have enough stretch in it. I think in my mind, sweatshirting is sweatshirting and it's stretchy it's not the case. So I've learned my lesson now and I'm gonna think much more about that before I make future projects. But not only did it not fit great over the bust, and I didn't really, I don't think I did a full bust adjustment on that one, so that was kind of on me. But I will say, even just down the arm, it was tighter than I think it was intended to be because of my fleecy fabric. So it ended up tighter along the sleeves, but I also couldn't pull the sleeves up at all because there just was no stretch. And because it was so thick and warm and fleecy, it was actually really hot to wear. And I couldn't layer it over anything because it was too tight on the arms to layer it. And if I got too hot, I had to just take the whole dress off and put something else on. And I would often get too hot in it because it was just really, really warm. I feel like maybe if I was in a different climate that was a lot colder in the winters, I would have had more use for it. But it just, it did not get worn this whole winter very much. I might have worn it once. I did wear it a fair few times when I first made it because it looks so cute and I really love the look of it. The shape of the skirt is really great. It's really floaty and fun. I took some fun pictures in the snow and I, like I said in it, I felt like a snow queen in this. It was like a hoodie dress, super cool design. But yeah, it was just honestly, it wasn't working. And I needed to try and make something with that really lovely fabric that didn't need quite so much stretch. So I decided I wanted to try and copy or adapt a version of a ready to wear pair of shorts that I really like, that I've been tending to try and, I don't wanna say copy, but be inspired by, because it's definitely not exactly the same. So the ready to wear shorts are these ones. So these, I think I got these from like Debenhams or something, the brand, they are Debenhams brand, so I definitely got them from Debenhams. They're a really fun pair of shorts. They are a French terry, so the inside is the classic loop back French terry. Cute stripe design, I love the contrast stitching over that waistband, I think that is just super cute. And it's got this cute detail where it rolls up the inside, so you can see that sort of, um, that French terry bit <laughs> folding up to be visible along the bottom of the shorts, which I think is, a super cute detail. What I will say with these, I mean, these are pajama shorts, that's all I wear them for, but they are very, very short. So you can see this is the crotch and that is the length of them. So they're super short shorts. 
and they're also incredibly low rise. So these are definitely great for pajamas and I love wearing them in the summer, especially when it's hot. It's like I'm barely wearing anything, but I've got that little bit of coverage and I'm not just in my underwear. So I, I really like the design of those shorts and I wanted to do something like that, but more something that I would feel comfortable wearing. I mean, I wasn't necessarily looking for a pair of shorts that I was gonna wear outside, but still ones that if, if say for example, I was staying with some family, I wouldn't mind putting those shorts on and going around. So I decided to start with the Hudson Pants pattern. I made the Hudson Pants before. I definitely have some issues with the fit on the Hudson Pants and I did make some adjustments when I was making these shorts. But I wanted to go with the Hudson Pants because for me they were wider in the thigh. And for shorts, I wanted to have that little bit of extra flaring out. I didn't want them taper going tight into my leg. So the Stella Joggers, which is the pattern that generally fits my body a bit better, they're quite tapered, and so I thought, okay, we'll start with the Hudson pants. I like that my other ones were a bit baggy. My Hudson pants were a bit baggy, which I felt like would suit the style of the shorts better. So I stuck with the high rise adjustment that I've made on those. So I talked about that in another video, which I'll pop a link to, but I made a high rise adjustment on my Hudson pants. So these were gonna be high rise shorts, and then I just made them as long as I wanted them to. So I basically cut the, the pieces so that it would be reasonably long. I think I gave myself like six inches or something from the crotch to the end so that I could then try them on and roll them up to the point where I wanted them to be. I think they ended up just being three and a half inches from the crotch to the edge of the shorts, which is plenty. Like I didn't need them to be very long. I just didn't want them to be little micro shorts like the other ones were. And I went along with the same design elements. So because they are based on the Hudson pants, Hudson pants have this really cute detail on the pockets with this little fold over section, which I think is super cute. One thing that I decided to do, cause this fabric has this beautiful fleece back, snuggly fleece back on the inside. I decided to make the pocket so that the inside of the pocket here would be that fleecy back. And when I put my hands in these pockets, you, you can believe me when I tell you, they are the coziest pockets I've ever put my hands into. They feel so nice, they are just, Oh, just like brushing the back of my hand with this super softness. Yeah, they are really, really cute and a really fun little detail that I added there. And then the other thing, the dress that I made before, I had added these patch pockets onto the front, which I think were a really cute detail. And I intentionally left the edges of the pockets raw rather than folding them in. A, because it was going to be way too bulky, but B, I like that little peak of the fleece back coming out around the edges of the pockets. And I thought, well, I've got these good pockets, why not use them? So I ended up trimming them down just a bit to make them back pockets, which I think are just adorable. I think they worked out really well and it makes me happy that I was able to use that detail from the original dress. And I'm sure as I wash and wear these, these this little edge is gonna peek out even more, which I really love. So that turned out really well. As far as the bottom edge, it was honestly as simple as I turned it up, I think I did it up five eighths of an inch, turned it up, turned it up again, and then stitched it down on the outside inseam and then the inside of the inseam. And I got myself my little copycat but improved shorts, which are just very cute. Now, like I said, I did have to do some adjustments with the fit. I find for me, for whatever reason, the size that I pick, the way that I make them, I have a lot of bagginess in the front of these pants. The back is okay, but the front is just quite baggy, particularly the sort of lower front section of these shorts. So I did just sit with my serger and just take in a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, till I got the fit that I was happy with. But I will say that it was a bit more adjusting than I was probably wanting to do. But I'm glad that I did it, because I think these shorts are really cute, and I feel like I will be wearing these ones a lot more than I was wearing that dress, which is a shame, because I love that dress in theory. It was just, in practice, it just wasn't getting worn, guys. And then I'm gonna run through briefly what I wore this week. Well, these last few days. So on the 29th of May, I was wearing my Jenny overalls again. This is a closet core patterned pattern in a really lovely needle cord fabric that I got from Higgs and Higgs. 
I do really love these overalls. You know I like these overalls, guys. And these were taken at the very end of the day, and I was surprised that they didn't get too creased and crinkled, because I feel like they can get a bit crinkly in the thighs when you're sitting down. They're non-stretch, you know, corduroy does tend to crease a bit, but when I was standing up and taking the photos, they still looked good, so I was pretty happy with that. And then I was wearing that with my Concord Tee by Cashmerette. This was the one that I made in the Clash of the Pattern series, if you saw that one. And this was in a lovely bamboo jersey fabric that I got from Blackbird Fabric. Sorry, I've gotten some bamboo jersey from a couple of places recently. I had not actually put these two together before, and I love them. It's a really fun combo. So my top, I don't think you can probably see it in the photos, but it has these really cute buttons, like a little sleeve tab with these hot pink buttons, which I feel like looks really great next to the green. They're actually the same buttons I've got on the jacket that I'm wearing now. So they really do pop and they look really cute. And that was a really just super comfortable and practical outfit that I was wearing. And I will definitely be pairing those two together again. On the 30th of May, I was wearing my Adrian Blouse Dress Hack. So this is the Adrian Blouse by Friday Pattern Company in a 10 cell jersey that I got from Sew Me Sunshine. I love this fabric. The print, the colors are just absolutely beautiful. The drape and just the weight of this fabric are really lovely as well. It's super soft. I really enjoy this dress hack that I did. I just added a gathered section under the bodice. They did do a tutorial on their website, the Friday Pattern Company, of how to do this. I think I probably didn't do it quite how they recommended, but in general, that was the basic way. It's just adding a gathered section, like I said. The only thing I will say with the Tencel jersey, I don't know if it's Tencel jersey in general or if it's just this one, I have noticed that over time, because I have worn this one lots, this is, this is definitely a favorite because it's so comfortable and it's surprisingly just kind of flattering the way that it drapes, but it's not too figure hugging. I feel like it looks really good, so I wear it a lot, but it, the fabric has definitely aged quite a bit since I've worn it. So I have noticed that it's slightly bobbly at points. It's slightly gone a bit pale as areas that have gotten rubbed over time, which is a bit disappointing. I didn't really know what to expect. I hadn't sewn with Tencel jersey before and I thought like maybe this is my new fabric and I'm not convinced that it is because of those elements. It's not gonna stop me from wearing this one until I can't wear it anymore, but it is gonna make me consider choosing that kind of fabric in the future. It's one of these things where we talk about items being sustainable and it is made from a more sustainable textile, but it's not necessarily gonna last as long in my wardrobe as something that was made from a different kind of fiber. So, you know, you just gotta consider the whole picture when you're thinking about that sustainability. Which brings me to today, the 31st of May, and I am wearing my Basic Instinct tee. So this is a free t-shirt pattern by Segundo Second Piano. It's one of my favorites for sure. It might be my favorite t-shirt. It's just too much fun. The print is just so great. I call it my taco love t-shirt because it has little tacos and hearts all over it. So taco love. And I did definitely make adjustments on this top pattern. I did a full bust adjustment. I graded out the hips. I think I might have even lowered the neckline a little bit on this one to make it my own. So I've done my tweaks to make it just how I like it. This is in a really beautiful art gallery cotton jersey fabric. I had made my mom a top out of the art, ga art gallery cotton jersey and was blown away by the quality of it, how soft and lovely it felt. So I had to make something like that for myself and that's where this t-shirt came from. On top of it, I have got my, this is my Julian Shore coat. So this is a shirt jacket style pattern. This is made in a really cool buffalo check fabric that I got from Melanated Fabrics. I really love this fabric. It's a bit heavier weight than a lot of flannels. It's a cotton flannel fabric with a really fleecy and thick and lovely inside la layer. So this was actually a really good layering piece for me over the winter time, autumn and winter. I wore it loads. So I know that I'm gonna need more of this style of thing in my life because it was so practical and so good, but it's also great even just like on a summer evening when it's getting a little bit chilly. So I feel like it's a very versatile piece that I've got in my wardrobe. I did show you I've got these fun contrast buttons on the cuffs and I've got the same contrast buttons, of course, going down it. I don't tend to button it up, but I just like to have it as a layer over the top, like a hoodie kind of a thing. And then I'm pairing this with my Ginger Jeans by Closet Core Patterns. I've talked about these before. These are black jeans that I made with some fabric that I got from the Fabric Godmother. And I've been surprised with how, even just within, I think it's like a month since I made them thereabouts, 
from washing and wearing them, they're getting a little bit more worn in looking, a lot more comfortable, and I'm really loving them even more than I did when I first made them. And because I always get really toasty hot when I'm filming, I'm gonna have to take this Julian chore coat off, but I wanted to show you the whole look because I think it is a cute look. And like I said, this this coat gets worn a lot. I'm calling it a coat because that's the name of it. But yeah, this this shirt jacket gets really worn a lot in my wardrobe. Now, as far as the lessons that I've learned, I do feel like I have learned a lot more, taken a lot more from Me Made May this year than I have previously. And that really just comes down to the pledge that I gave myself. So this is my fourth year doing Me Made May. And I feel like the first couple of years, it was just that little bit more of a challenge to be able to wear more Me Made because I didn't have quite as much of clothes that I've made in my wardrobe at that time. And I, this year, knew that that wasn't gonna be really the challenge element. I did commit to taking a photo a day, which I've done for all of my previous years of Me Made May as well. And I knew going in, I mentioned it when I told you about this pledge, that that's not my favorite part of the process during the month of May. And I know that, but I want to do it for future me because I know that it is really useful and really interesting and really fun for me to look back at the things that I had been wearing over previous Me Made Mays. So I did manage to do that every day. I've been sharing them with you, so hopefully you've seen those anyway. But the other part of the challenge, important part of the challenge, is that I wanted to try and do a lot more refashioning. So I pulled out all of my Me Made garments at the end of April, everything I've made that I still have in my wardrobe, and some that were tucked away, kind of out of my wardrobe, but I maybe wanted to bring back in. And I made two big stacks of things I was hoping to work through, and I did not know how far I would get, but I thought, I'll just do what I can, see how I get on in this month. Guys, I made it through all of the things that I wanted to work on this month, which I am shocked by, genuinely, did not think that I was gonna work through that. I showed you these two separate, I couldn't even hold them in my two hands. I had like two hands to hold each stack because there were so many things in there. But everything in there either got just a little alteration or repair, got completely refashioned, or there were a couple of things that I just learned my lessons and then said goodbye to those garments. But on the whole, I feel like I got so much from that because I was able to work through those items one at a time. Something else that I've realized about myself whilst I was reflecting for this video is apparently I like a challenge and I think it's something where I like to challenge myself and set my own goals for it and tell myself what I want to do about it and then work through that. And it doesn't matter if anybody else is listening. I'm not doing it for other people or for anyone to like cheer me on or keep me accountable. It's very much like inward for me. I want to know that I can achieve this thing. And so I give myself challenges and I work through these challenges. So me made May, I do every May. At the beginning of January, I always do the Yoga with Adrian 30 day yoga challenge. It's yoga journey, I think it's called, it's not a challenge, but you know, I do yoga every day for 30 days at the beginning of the year. I gave myself a goal of 20 things I wanted to do for 2020. And back in 2020, I also said that I didn't need to achieve all of those 20 things. But one thing that I really wanted to do was to bake a different type of bread each month for that year. And I did that. In December, from the 1st of December up until the 25th of December, I set myself the challenge of making one video every single day, which was intense, but I did it. And yeah, apparently I like doing this to myself. I always feel like at the end, I'm just like, oh, we're at the end, finally, I don't have to do this thing that I decided I wanted to do. But I do like to push myself in that way. And I think I do learn more about myself about whatever it is that the challenge is, so whether it's like a craft or my body or my mind, whatever it is, I really do like to see what I can get out of those personal challenges. And if you are someone who likes to do challenges like that and you know whether you stick to them or you don't, I would love to hear about it and let me know if you do stick to them or you don't. But generally speaking, when I set myself those kinds of personal challenges, I, I rarely drop out unless something comes in that absolutely stops me, I cannot continue. But I am proud of what I've achieved this month and I'm really glad that I've managed to stick to my pledge this year. And the biggest thing that I learned over this month, honestly, is that 
I can refashion clothes and I'm not too bad at it if I do say so myself. I did not think this was in my skill set. This is honestly a bit of a revelation for me. As you will have picked up, there are some very old garments that have been sitting around for a long time that in my mind I feel like I'm hanging on to this because one day I want to do something with this, but not now, this isn't the time, or I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this garment, so I'm just going to put it to one side. And I really forced myself to try and work on this this month. And it went better than I expected, and I was really surprised and really enjoyed each week all the new challenges that I had. You know, each garment had its own challenge. Yeah, I'm not an expert at mending. That much I have learned, but I knew before. And I do want to learn more about it, and I've got some books on my wish list now that I'll hopefully get for upcoming Christmases and birthdays and things. But mending at this point, I feel like, is more about can I somehow make this garment wearable if it wasn't wearable before? And if I can get a little bit more wear out of it than it had before and prolong its life just a little bit, that's good enough for me. So I'm happy enough with the things that I mended, but really more just eye-opening was the total refashions that I did. Because I have definitely previously looked at an old skirt that I made and all I could see was that same old skirt. And I thought, well, what can I do to make this different? I mean, I can make it shorter, but is that different? Or I can add some buttons here, but does that really make it different? And I feel like this month I was able to step outside of that a little bit more and just see these more as pieces of fabric or as opportunities. And I would think, what would this have made sense with better if I hadn't made the garment that I had? And I feel like that's gonna be really eye-opening for me going forward, but it also meant that I was kind of confronted with some of the bad choices that I had made previously. And then I can learn to not make those same mistakes in the future. Now, one thing that I expected that definitely went as expected is that refashioning is a lot harder than just making garments from scratch. And I think that's probably what put me off really going for it before, because you are very much you're limited by what you've got. You know, I did have some scraps of some of the garments that I've made before, but a lot of them, I just had the garment that was in front of me. So even if in my mind, oh yeah, this fabric would make a really beautiful such and such skirt or such and such dress, I might not have enough fabric to make that happen. And sometimes that would actually push me to think a little bit more creatively. So the dress that I cut up and I made the Norma dress hack, or the Norma, <laughs> the Norma blouse hack out of, I ended up doing a short sleeve because I didn't have enough fabric to do the full long sleeve. And I love it. And I think it's actually way better than if I had done a three quarter length sleeve as I had originally thought I would want to do. But that was just because of the limitations that I happened to have with that fabric. So that was just a total happy accident that happened. But additionally, you know, I would have to think about, okay, how can I make the most of the scraps that I've got? Maybe I would cut some things on the cross grain, or maybe I would think about, yeah, in an ideal world, I would want to place the flowers here, but I've got what I've got, and I'm just going to have to try and make the pieces work as they are. And I definitely was more using my fabric. I didn't have very much scraps left over from most of these refashions, so it felt additionally more sustainable from that point of view as well. The other thing that was surprising and interesting was if I had made a garment before and, and I was trying to deconstruct it, so you know, unpick the seams or take apart certain sections, I was actually able to see my previous sewing. And it was really interesting and just fun to see how much I've progressed in my sewing. So a dress that I made in 2013, I didn't particularly feel like my sewing has changed that massively, but in 2013, I was very hit and miss with whether I was finishing my edges of my seams. I mean, to be fair, these garments got washed and worn and the edges didn't fray that badly. So I'm not too worried about that. But it's just interesting to notice the differences and how early on in my sewing journey, apparently I thought that the stitches needed to be super tight to make them secure. And wow, are those hard to unpick. So it was just funny to see how I've changed. It was really nice to see garments that I'd finished really well. Whenever I did any hand sewing, whenever I did any French seams, I appreciated it at the time and I appreciate when I'm wearing it, but I really appreciated it when I was looking at those things and taking those seams apart. And I felt a real connection to my past self when I had taken that extra care and 
done what I could to make those garments as beautiful on the inside as I had on the outside. I feel like I've generally started to do that a little bit more over the years, but again, sometimes I take more care with that and sometimes I don't. And a lot of it just depends on the kind of garment, the type of fabric, whether it would benefit from it or not. So I'm not necessarily saying that that's what I always want to do, but it was just nice to be able to see those projects where that little extra care had gone into it. One of the things that did put me off refashioning any of my old clothes was this feeling of these are really special garments or they're really special fabric that I really love. And I don't wanna try and cut into those things and screw them up and then take them out of my life entirely. I'm not usually someone who's very precious about fabric. I buy fabric because I wanna sew it up and because I wanna wear it. And so I don't usually worry too much about cutting into those fabrics. But I do think old me maids is a little bit different. And that is just because of the association, the memories that I have with the time when I wore that garment before. And it just feels that little bit more special. But what I realized this month and I was really thinking about this month is these garments, they're not getting worn anyway. And holding on to them and keeping them tucked away in a drawer or in the back of a, a wardrobe, that is not doing anything for those garments. I'm not looking at them more often. I'm not enjoying them as objects. They're just being tucked away. So what is the risk really? So when I realized that, I felt a little bit more brave and able to just go in and take something apart that I knew was not gonna get worn the way that it was. And I don't think I had anything that I refashioned that was a complete flop. So that is pretty incredible. And I feel like I then was able to breathe new life and actually it was more of like a, a kind gesture to my past self in these past garments to be able to still help them live a little bit longer and these beautiful fabrics still get to be worn. I feel like that also gave me a good opportunity to just kind of try stuff, be a little bit more imaginative, a little bit more creative, go out of my comfort zone a bit, do things that I wouldn't necessarily have done before, like the Zadie jumpsuit that I ice dyed. I never ice dyed before, but I felt like I'm not wearing this 80 jumpsuit, so why not just see if it might be more wearable after the ice dye? And I love how it turned out with the ice dye, and now I wanna wear it so much more. So it was worth just those little trials, because if it didn't work out, I wasn't any worse off. I already had a jumpsuit that I wasn't wearing. I do think that this type of sewing, the refashioning, it switches on a different part of your brain. I think you have to be a little bit more imaginative, a little bit more problem solving because I had great ideas of things when I cut a garment apart and then I compared it to the pattern pieces of what I thought I was gonna make and there was just no way I was gonna be able to make that. So I had to totally scratch that plan and then think over. And like I said, make some adjustments here and there where things might be a little bit shorter than intended or you know, a little bit different sort of finishing details than I would normally have done. But I feel like that really stretched my brain in a really positive way. I don't necessarily wanna be in that kind of headspace all the time, but I think it is good for me to exercise that part of my brain. And Me Made Mate definitely did that for me. And then of course there were the lessons that I learned from what I wasn't wearing and what I wanted to refashion, what wasn't working. So one thing that was a bizarre thing I hadn't noticed as an issue in my life is that apparently when I make solid color things with a v-neck, they have a tendency to feel a bit too much like scrubs for me. I think if you don't wear scrubs in your normal life, it probably never would have that problem for you but it seems to be a recurring theme. So I feel like for me, if I'm gonna be making anything, particularly if it's a bit oversized and boxy, that has a V-neck, I'm probably just gonna stay away from solids altogether and use a print. Otherwise, just think a little bit more about the proportions of the sleeves and the fit. I mean, if it's a really fitted thing, then probably it's okay. If I made a normal blouse, I don't think that would be necessarily an issue. But it's just useful to recognize these things because I love these fa fabrics and I love the patterns, but just for me, they're not ever really gonna have to, they're not gonna cross well. So I just need to learn that and I have. The other thing is thinking about sheerer fabrics, particularly cotton lawn fabric. I really like cotton lawn fabric and I, in my mind, want to sew and wear cotton lawn just so much of the time. The issue is that it's really very lightweight and it's really not very warm. So it's great on a hot day, but especially like a dress for myself in the country that I live in that does not have a lot of really hot days. 
it's just not very practical for me to be covering myself in cotton lawn. The other thing with cotton lawn is if it's lighter, especially in color, it tends to be very sheer. And if I'm making something in a cotton lawn that I wanna wear on a hot day, I probably don't wanna wear a slip under it because that's gonna be even hotter. So I feel like I just need to learn the lesson and I'm gonna just generally avoid cotton lawn for dresses unless maybe there's enough gathering around that I definitely wouldn't need to worry too much about wearing a slip or lining it because I don't even wanna line a cotton lawn dress. If I'm making it, like I said, for hot weather, I wanna have as little clothing touching me, as little layers as possible, which is the point, but it's just not practical in my life. The other thing that I had definitely been aware of to some degree is the change in my preference of where my waistline sits. So the waistline on the clothes that I'm wearing. My husband showed me a really stupid meme that made me laugh about the difference between my waistline in my 20s versus my waistline in my 40s. And it's obviously exaggerated for amusement, but for sure when I was in my 20s, I was all about the low rise. I think a lot of people were, you know, I wasn't alone at that point. And now that I'm getting older, I feel like I want to make sure that I've got that coverage there. But also I feel like things tend to just slip lower and lower because I'm quite curved inward at the waist. So wherever I expect things to sit, they usually over time, over a day, stretch out and get even lower than I intend them to. I'd realized that with pants, which is why I made the high rise ginger jeans. But even with skirts, I want them higher than I used to, which I hadn't realized. So it's just really useful for me to recognize that and plan a little bit more accordingly in the future. This is why I was thinking about making all these high rise stretch trousers that you might have heard me about when I was asking for pattern suggestions for that for my ne next clash of the patterns because that is something that I feel is really missing in my wardrobe and it definitely made it very clear to me if I had had those garments during this month I would have definitely been wearing a lot more separates and I would have reached for those much more than I did this current month. And the other thing I got from this month of pulling out all of my Mime clothes before May started and wearing them throughout the month is how much I really love a lot of the clothes that I've made, which is pretty great. I feel really lucky. I feel really proud of all of these things that I've made that make me feel good, that make me feel happy. And I hope to continue to do that. Obviously, that is the whole aim of why I'm sewing. Well, that's part of the aim. The bigger part, to be fair, is actually the enjoyment I get from sewing, but that's another topic for another day. But pulling out all my memes just through that initial wardrobe assessment actually made me spot things that I hadn't worn in a while and got really excited about wanting to wear again. And this month I was expecting to do a lot more of repeating the patterns that I was wearing or the, the garments that I was wearing. But because I'd been reminded of all these things, I was like, oh, I gotta wear that one. Oh, I wanna wear this one now because I remembered that it existed. And then obviously because I did all these refashions, I was able to bring some garments that I wasn't wearing back into my wardrobe. So I feel like I've really boosted my wardrobe up in a really positive way. And I feel like I know what I've got there are things generally that I want. I've got a handful of items, small number, maybe two or three items that are on reserve that I'm just, I'm keeping an eye on them. I haven't gotten rid of them, but I think there's a potential that I might. But the vast majority of things that I have made are garments that I really enjoy wearing when I do wear them. And it also was nice for me during this month that we had quite a range of weather. So we had some really warm days, some really pretty chilly days, so that I was able to reach for some of my, my more summery makes and some of my more kind of wintry autumnal makes that I wouldn't necessarily have done had the month of May been a little bit different for the weather. It has been really fantastic to hear how many of you have felt inspired by all of the refashions and the reworking and the mending that I've been doing over this month. I feel like I need to be completely open and honest with you guys that this is not something that I do all the time. That's why it was a challenge for me and that's why I gave myself that challenge at the beginning of May that I wanted to do that more because it's something that I've tended to shy away from. I'm not saying that I'm a, you know, a totally changed person and I'm going to refashion and mend all the time now. I mean, for one thing, everything's up to date. I don't have anything that needs refashioning or needs mending. And I'm hoping that there won't be that many things going forward. But I will say that it does make me feel that little bit more confident doing those kinds of things in the future. And it has been just so incredible to hear all the details of ways that people have gone out of their way to re refashion and mend things based on things they've seen me try, or just the inspiration in general of going back to those unloved garments and making them loved again. So 
please do let me know if you've done any more of that in the comments down below or if you're just someone who does this kind of thing all the time awesome more power to you I'm hoping that I'm going to be a little bit more like that in the future but I will not be completely shocked if next May when me made May rolls around again I may well have a pretty big stack of things that I might want to refashion then I would also love to hear what gaps you guys have found in your me made wardrobe because I know just from pulling out what you've got and wearing what you can that always for me has been one of the biggest takeaways is recognizing where am I lacking in my me made wardrobe what do I maybe want to try making more of or make next so that way I can boost that up. I really do hope that you've enjoyed watching my progress throughout the month of May and that you enjoyed today's video. Please do give me a like down below if you did, just so that other people can find this video too. Think about subscribing if you want to see more of my videos and I'll be catching you all very soon. Bye!